Allen Revival telecast, bringing to you some of the greatest and some of the most dramatic scenes that have ever been placed on sound film. Night after night, thousands of people come to this great revival tent to see and to witness the very things you're going to see and witness today on this telecast. Everything that you see on this telecast is unplanned. It's unrehearsed. Our television cameramen are planted in every service to glean for you the amazing incidents and the great miracles of healing that take place night after night. Now, we invite you to come right in and sit down on the front row. We want your faith to be inspired, and we want you to be blessed, healed, delivered, set free by God's power as we enjoy this great service together on one of the greatest tents in the world. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce to you the man that God has anointed with a miracle ministry, with a message designed to bring help and blessing for your mind, soul, and body, God's man of faith and power, Reverend A. A. Allen. Glory to God. Amen. God bless you, friend. Do you have any night? How many feel the presence of the Lord under this canvas? Raise your hand up. If you feel God's power, will you say amen? amen? Now, here is the short inspirational message from the book of 1 John. I'm reading the third chapter, the 21st verse. Here it is. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then, and I say then only, then have we confidence, that means faith. John, here's condensed the word faith down to confidence. Then have we confidence or faith toward God. And whatsoever we ask of him we receive of him because, or for this reason, we keep his commandments and we do those things that are pleasing in his sight. So I've said to you last week, it was God's will that none should be sick and suffer. God entered into a covenant with his people. He said, I am the Lord, thy God that healeth thee. He said, I will take sickness away from thee. He simplified the covenant further and declared, I will take all sickness away from thee. And I showed you as he led his people out of bondage, out of captivity, out of three million, there wasn't one sick disease or affliction because all the children of God believe what the Lord said. I said they believed their pastor. Their pastor's name was Moses, and he said the Lord will take all sickness away from thee, and you know, friend, they didn't know a bit more than to believe what he said. Amen. Wouldn't it be wonderful if everybody today had pastors who preached to them that God would take all sickness away, and all the members of the congregation would believe it? Yeah. Why, if God healed his people in the time of Moses, he heals his people in the time of Alan. Our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But listen, the same thing that made people whole in days gone by will make you whole today. What was it that brought healing and deliverance to them? It was their faith. Christ himself declared in the fifth chapter of Mark, the 34th verse, there's the lady, and if I faith have made you whole. Then, hear me, it was this woman's faith that brought into uh, uh, to operation a mighty supernatural gift which struck at her sickness, disease, and infirmity. That was the gift of eating. And that woman recovered. But listen, it was her faith that brought that gift into operation. And if you look further in the ninth chapter of Matthew, about the 28th verse, here are two blind men. Here's what Jesus said to them. He said, according to your faith, it shall be done unto you then. The woman was healed because she had faith. The two blind men were healed according to their faith. In the 14th chapter of Acts, uh, the 8th verse, a man at Lystra who had been born impotent in his feet, he had never been able to walk. He heard Paul preaching, and here is what the Scripture declares. Uh, the Scripture says that Paul discerned or perceived he had faith to be healed. Hear me. You either have faith or you don't have faith. You can either be healed or you will not be healed, but you will be healed according to your proportion of faith. But your proportion of faith is given to you by God. He is the author and he is the finisher of our faith. But our proportion of faith is given to us from heaven by God according to the amount of holiness in our own heart. Faith comes from God, but God doesn't give everyone faith. If that's true, devils would all have faith. The ungodly and the sinful would have faith, but God has reserved all his promises for his children who have faith. This is why he said in 1 John 3, 21, if our heart condemn us not, 
that if you've gotten out of your heart and, and have rid your heart and cleansed your heart of all sin, rebellion, self-will, that which brings condemnation, then in your heart you have faith instead of conviction. Then if our heart no longer condemns us, then we have confidence or faith in God. And the very next verse says, and whatsoever, whatsoever you ask, we are going to receive from heaven, receive of God, because of this reason. Because we walk in his statutes, we keep his commandments, and we do them, and we do the things that are pleasing in his sight. There is only one thing that's powerful enough to cleanse you from sin. That's the blood of Jesus. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we, we have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus as we repent of our sins and turn our back upon our sin because we're sorry enough to quit. We are cleansed from every stain and from the guilt and the condemnation these. And from that very moment, we have faith. So bow your head now. I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask God to speak to you, to loose your liberation, set you free, and make you a child of God. So bow your head and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and he'll do it. Father, I pray for everyone who watched this telecast who heard me preach. Let the Spirit of God go out into the homes of the people. Let it bring condemnation and conviction. But let the blood of Jesus Christ cleanse from all stain, all guilt, and all sin, and set them free, I pray, everyone, that have watched this telecast today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If your body suffers pain and your health you can't regain and your soul is almost sinking in despair jesus knows the pain you feel he can save he can heal take your burdens to the lord and leave it there everybody sing it Do you know we're in revival? Yeah. The greatest revival the world's ever known. God is healing the sick. Demon spirits are being cast out. Jesus made exactly what he said when he said, These signs shall follow them that believe. He said, They shall lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. They shall cast out devils or demons. Many people's lives today are controlled and domineered by demon spirits and by unclean spirits, by tormenting spirits, by suicide spirits. Under this tent tonight is a woman who is bound by a suicide demon. Did you ever hear a voice say, life isn't worth living? You might as well die, you might as well end it all. Wherever that woman is, I want her to get up right now and come down here because God's going to set you free from this suicide devil. By that I mean a suicide demon. Am I talking to you? Am I One of these suicide demons never come under this tent unless I feel it. How many believe that God does let us feel these things in our spirit? Do you want God to do something for you? Yes, I do, Brother Alan. What's your trouble? Well, this um, thing that's been bothering me seems to tell me there's no hope for me. That's why I tried to kill myself. Have you tried to kill yourself? Three times. Three times? Have you ever seen me before? No. Have you ever talked to me before? No. Is this the first time you've been here? Yes, it is. Why did you come tonight? Well, I had faith that something would happen. It just had to happen. Huh? You want God to help you. 
see you got scars all over your wrists. Mm -hmm. I see where the stitches have sewn them up. Mm -hmm. My, my, you just cut that one all to pieces, didn't you? How many believe that God can help this poor girl? There will be 30,000 people commit suicide in America this year. If you are not freed and loose from this spirit that oppresses you and possesses you, domineers and controls you, you could be next. This type of demon spirit especially preys upon the sick who can't get well, people seemingly that cannot be healed. It preys upon people who have been unsuccessful in uh, love or matrimony. Especially does it prey upon people who have had financial reverses. This particular type of demon preys upon this kind of people. The special people with deformity or people that feel that they're not as beautiful as others or as handsome as others. But our God is greater than that, isn't he? Jesus said, Behold, I give you power over all the power of the devil. Is that right? Yes. Hear me. Nothing but an unclean suicide spirit or demon would prey upon a girl until she'd slash her wrists and cut her arms in such a manner. Everybody under this tent stand back there. You're going to pray with me tonight. And I'm going to pray. We believe in God to set this woman free. No need to cry anymore. God's going to do something for you tonight. Uh -huh. Tell us again. The thing that's had me trouble, it keeps telling me I'm just doomed. That's all. There's just no hope. She hears a voice that says you're doomed. There is no hope. Nobody loves you. Nobody wants you. Thousands of you who watch this tonight, you've heard a voice. There's no hope. There's no hope. If you that listen, I want to stop here long enough to say this. If you write me, I'll send you absolutely free a great book I have written for people in this shape, in this condition. It is called Seven Other Spirits. Seven great chapters, and one chapter deals with the suicide demon. Write me for it, and remember, ask for the book, Seven Other Spirits. It will tell you in your home how you can be free. Write for it this week, and I'll pray for you next week. Are you ready? Preachers, put your hands up and pray with me. Raise your hands, everybody, and join me in prayer. In the name of Jesus, thou foul suicide demon, Thou unclean spirit that binds this girl, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. I command you and I charge you, let her go. In the name of Jesus, come out of her. Let her go in Jesus' name, I command. Loose her now. Oh, God, give her the joy of the Lord in her heart. The joy of the Lord in her heart. Make life worth living from this very moment. In the name of Jesus. Put your hands up and start praising the Lord. Put your hands up and start praising the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. How many believe it's gone? Do you believe it's gone? Thank you, Jesus. Praise your wonderful name. Thank you, Jesus. Do you want to live now? You want to live now? Yes, sir. You want to live for Jesus? I'll live for God and do what he'd have me to You're do. You're going to live for him, aren't you? Yes, sir. You feel better? Yes, I Didn't do. Didn't you feel something leave you? Yes. I knew you would. Put your hands up. Go back to your seat and thank the Lord. Everybody say amen. Praise the Lord with us. Now, I want you to tell these people what's your trouble. I had a collapsed lung for four years. As a result, the chest is sunk in, and there's a thickening on the, on the uh, pleural wall on the lung that the lung 
it won't come out easy unless they operate it on, but I don't want How to. How did it get collapsed like that? They thought I had TB on the lung. And they collapsed that lung? Yeah. Uh -huh. And they can't do anything about it? Yeah, well, the, the thing is, it wasn't the bronchial tube, not in the See, lung. That's why it's all sunk in there. Yeah. Uh -huh. Look at this man's chest. Look at this. See how this is all sunk in? The big chest over here, all this. He wants God to fill that up again. Do you believe God's going to do it? Sure. He... Right now? Yeah. What would you do if it just start filling up? Just take some more air. You just take some more air. <laughs> all right. We're going to ask God to give you another one. Jesus, for this collapsed lung, oh God. But Jesus, oh God, for your glory. My God, for your glory. In the name of Jesus, heal this man's collapsed lung, oh God. God, for your glory. Bring it to naught for the glory of God in Jesus' name. We ask. Stand right here. I'm believing God tonight. Take a deep breath. In the name of Jesus. Take a deep breath. In the name of Jesus. My God, bring it to pass. Bring it to pass, Lord. Bring it to pass. Take a deep breath again. Come on, brother. God's going to put air in that lung. Hallelujah. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Take a deep breath. Hallelujah. Take another one. God's filling it up. Look here. Hallelujah. Look here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. Can you see God's doing it? I'm going to have him tell you just what he's feeling in that lung. Hallelujah. I know God's doing something for him. Praise God. Jesus. Look here now. Thank you, Jesus. Tell these people what Praise God. What what you feel? I could feel like either bones or the muscles were lifting. And I can feel in places that it's on the sides that the lung is touching the wall. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now I don't know how that would Praise feel, but I believe he knows how it would feel. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Isn't the Lord good to us? Aren't you glad we can come to Jesus? And Jesus will do it every time. Here's your coat, son. Will you come back and testify? Send me your testimony for the glory of God. Amen. How many believe God with me tonight? Here's the little lady that's driven from way up down past uh, near Bakersfield. Bakersfield. She's bringing a brother. And the doctors and medical science have given up. Cancer. Thousands of people across the nation this very moment are bound to cancer. They'll never, never, never be made well unless God makes them well. But as we see night after night after night, there is a power that's greater than cancer. Amen? And that is the mighty power of God. Do you have faith for your brother? Yes, I have for this what I bring him. I told my husband went up there to his ranch and tell, tell him that when he was up there in Fresno, your, your tent, he, he was safe. My husband was safe up there. And my two daughters got the Holy Ghost up there. And I know God can heal him. Yes. And I told him he's going to be healed right now. He's going to be healed. Yes, ma'am. He has cancer of intestine. Yeah, and, and he violence. doesn't sleep. He has six months. He doesn't sleep just for taking some pills from the doctors, you know. He sleeps uh -huh. two or three hours a night. That's all. For six months he for can't six, sleep. That's right. He's in such pain and agony. But we're going to ask God tonight to heal this man. How many believe Jesus will answer prayer and do it? You tell him in his own language that as I pray, He's going to feel something go all Amen, over him. Amen, Jesus. Dice que cuando él ore con, por usted, va a sentir una cosa en todo su cuerpo, y usted también va a decir a Dios que lo sane. Pasa la mano para arriba. Does he believe the Lord's going to heal him tonight? ¿Cree que Dios lo va a sanar? Dice que sí. Yes, 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 yes. He just believes it. In the name of Jesus. Let the Spirit. 
Spirit of God come on this man, Lord. Let the power of God come on this man. Lord, from the top of his head down to the bottom of his feet. Set him free by the power of God in Jesus' name. Amen, Lord. Take this cancer away. My Lord, remove this cancer in Jesus' name. From the top of his head, Lord, to the bottom of his feet. Make him whole. Amen. I believe God. Yes. What does he say? He says God healed him. He says he believes God's healed him. No, no, see. see, what did he say? He feels something on his body. He feels something all over his body. Uh -huh. Do you know what that is? That's the Spirit of God. Get up from there. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on back. You feel better now. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. How's your stomach now? Is it all right? Is it all right? Is it all right? Is it all right? <laughs> all right. Come up here. Come up here. How many believe God's done something for this man? You ask him if he's got any pain. He said, no, he doesn't have any pain. No pain now. No pain now. It's all gone. Yes. It's all gone. Yes, yes, yes. It's gone. It's gone. It's all gone. No more hurting. It's all gone. How many believe God's done something for him? Leave it there. thank God for what he's doing for us tonight. Isn't Jesus wonderful? Amen. Do you believe he'd do the same thing for everybody who watched our, our telecast? Yes. You believe he'll do it? Amen. How many would like to join me in prayer tonight for all who have seen this, who are being oppressed, possessed, bound, baxter, controlled, or domineered, whether continually or at times or merely at times by some kind of a spirit that they feel is oppressing them mentally. Would you join me in prayer? Would you believe God with me? Every one of you there in your home, listen. All these people tonight, these ministers, they're praying with me. We're praying for you, hear me. If there has been a voice speaking to you, if you feel you're having mental troubles, if you're agitated, if you're nervous, hear me. Raise your hand, I'm going to pray for you right now. Do you know that 67 millions of Amer million Americans cannot sleep at night without sleeping tablets or an overdose of sedatives or drugs? You, perhaps, are one of them. But my God is greater than that thing. The reason you cannot sleep, you're being tormented through your nerves 
by a tormenting spirit. We're going to pray. And I've got faith for every one of you out there that my God will set you free while I pray. Hallelujah. Are you ready, preachers? You ready? Yes. Put your hands up. Everybody join me. My God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, loose the sick, loose the diseased, loose the afflicted, and let the Spirit of God, my Lord, come into the homes of the people. Take away that tormenting spirit, the foul demon of fear, oh God, this very moment, to those that are being tempted to commit suicide, to those that are lonely, to those whose hearts are broken, to those with broken homes, oh God, loose them from tormenting suicide spirits now in Jesus' name. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord.